Are you losing coolant? Today in Bleeding Jeep Garage, we're gonna to try to help you out and help you diagnose possibly where your coolant's going. Today, we're working on a 2006 Jeep Commander that's losing coolant. It's not leaking on the floor, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna try out a radiated pressure tester and see why it's leaking and hopefully we can figure that out. There's several different types of pressure testers. This is just one of the many that are out there on the market. There's your little instruction manuals. On this particular one, there's a screw adapter. So if your radiator cap screws onto a pressure tank, you have that. We have your traditional, I call it American, radiator cap and then these are both imports We're going to fit like a Toyota and a Honda this is the way this kits made and the way this works is we put this on the radiator and this guy right here pumps up we pump it up and there's the gauge your average radiator cap is only going to reach 16 pounds so we're going to go up to that 15 to 16 pound right there and that's where we're going to stop because that's where this car more than likely is leaking coolant and we're going to try to diagnose at that time where it's leaking when it gets to pressure so the first thing you want to do is locate your radiator cap or your pressure tank in some cases there's a pressure tank over here and like i said you just need to diagnose which cap is your pressurized cap in this case it's here now, if you're running a problem where you're running out of coolant and such like that, well, you need to make sure it's full before you start this test or you're going to pump for like 20 days and you're never going to get pressure. So make sure you go ahead and fill up your water and make sure the engine's cool before you try to do this because if you pull this off and the engine's hot, it could be a bad day. This thing could explode and you could be end up in the hospital. So don't do that. But always make sure that this is good and full. It doesn't have to be completely topped off. We're going to take the pressure tester and put it on there and see what we get. So this particular kit, there's like I said, there's tons of different ones, but you want to install this kit with this cross piece on the top, right like this. So you want to install it like that right there. So when it goes on, you twist it. Ooh. And then when you pop this, it locks in. And that's the same thing as the spring right here. It just holds that back. So that's the same thing it's doing. So let's pump it up and see what we get. So traditionally you'd sit here and watch and see how this is going. If it starts to go down, you can see it dropping right there. You hear it dripping on the floor? It's peeing on the floor right now, guys. Let's go look and see where it's dripping out. Ah, Yahtzee! That's it right there. Found it! Holy cow, it's leaking a lot. Okay, so some of you may see these right here. I'm not a huge fan of this whole radiator flush thing when you have to add these ports. I understand it. I'm just not a huge fan because it's a cheap old piece of plastic normally. Well, there's two of them. The second one's leaking like a sieve. So I don't know where it's come from. Could be just a leak, a loose hose clamp here, but it's pouring out the bottom like super steady stream. So a lot of times you're going to realize immediately if you have a leak, even if you don't hear it in our case, it's running all the way across the floor but your pressure should stay the same if you don't have a leak. So if you're doing this with a pressure tester, that means you got a leak. So you're typically always gonna figure something out. But we started at that 15, 16 pound mark and you see where it's at right here. And as we sit here, you just watch it start to go down. So you know you got a leak going on somewhere. All right guys, so this was an easy one, right? I've had success with this thing, I'd say probably 100%. I don't know that I've never not found the leak with this thing. Um, it's just so, such a simple tool and it works great every single time. Um, you can get this exact one, like I said, on Amazon, same colors and all. We're gonna leave a link in the description. But again, there's tons of different ones. But either way, here's this. So you'd pump it back up once it was fixed and you'd pump it up in that 15 to 16 range because Majority of your caps are gonna be a 16 PSI cap. This one says 18, I believe, on it, but 
So you pump it up in that 16 range and just leave it there. Once you get it fixed, it would just hold. But keep in mind, you wanna make sure it's full of fluid and everything like that. So what happens if you pump this up, it's going down, but you can't see a leak, okay? This is probably one of the worst case scenarios if it comes to this. It could be as simple as you have a blown heater core and it's leaking into the car, into your inside of your car. So you may want to look in the floorboard in there and see if there's something in the floorboard, but that could happen. But again, that's probably not it. But say you had a blown head gasket and the coolant was leaking into the engine itself and, and burning it slightly and going out the tailpipe. Well, normally you would see white smoke and all that prior to that if it was a pretty good leak. But if that was the case, there could literally be pumping water into your engine right then. So say it was another thing like you had an oil and water cooler or your intake gasket had blown and water was going into the oil system well then you'd have contaminated oil so if you were to pull off your cap right here and what's a funky cap pull off this cap you a lot of times have a white milky residue right there because moisture as it gets hot it's going to go up so the bottom of this cap is that being black would be white that would be your first little test symptom there and then again pulling the dipstick tube and seeing if your oil was white and all that that would be catastrophic you would never want to see that but it does happen so same with your engine if it was pumping into the cylinders and you couldn't diagnose it was coming out the tailpipe or something if it was easy enough you could pull your spark plugs and if there was coolant going into the spark plug spark plugs traditionally one of those spark plugs Believe it or not, it's going to change color. And if you have a green coolant, normally the spark plug will have a green tinge on the end of it, which is kind of funny that it even works that simple. But you'll notice one's a little different. So that would be catastrophic failure. You would never hope for that. But again, this tool works really well. So if you have a coolant leak, try it out. Remember, if you like this video, there's plenty more on the channel here. So subscribe, hit the blue bell, comment below if you have any other, other awesome tools that we need to try out or tricks up your sleeve. And if you're a real big fan, go to Patreon, guys. Have a good day.